one thing that I want to say that may sound a bit odd is don't be afraid of reduction criticism. And what I mean with that is that it took me a long time to realize that the idea that you encounter when you research the prophetic literature is that, oh, this was written by the prophet himself, but this was written by the redactor, and this was written by another redactor. And scholars tend to divide the prophetic literature into sort of several layers of sort of the the original layer and then a reduction layer and then more layers. And when I first started to study the prophetic literature, I was quite daunted by that. And I started to wonder, well, how does that work when I think about my faith in verbal inspiration and so forth? What does that tell me about the Bible that you have all these different authors? Do we really have them? Do we really need them? And it took me some time to realize that this was actually a positive thing because it showed me the enduring relevance of the books. The redactors weren't there to destroy the originally beautiful text. They were there to make it relevant for their generation. So when people talk about redaction, it's actually Mm -hmm. a way of preserving, of ensuring the enduring relevance of the biblical book. They they would read them again. They would treasure them again. They were updating them to make it Mm. relevant for their and future generations. So, yes, the prophetic literature is very difficult, partly because you have different authors who have added this bit and that bit. But, But to realize that that is something positive, that that is because it is relevant Mm. and to draw out that relevance to the readers. So, yeah, redaction criticism is not something odd or negative. It's something positive because it means not archiving Mm. God's word, but making it relevant. Mm. Wow. That's such a fascinating and beautiful way to put this because yeah. just take Isaiah for example right there are so many discussions mm. people have about the redaction history of Isaiah and it can often feel like this is a war between two different approaches mm. whether no this this must all be Isaiah's original beautiful words or there's a scandal that's happening and it's mm-hmm. realizing that that is probably a false dichotomy as you're saying and there's that redactors aren't villains. In fact, I think any of us who've done any serious work are glad that editors are a part of a process to begin with. And we're also (laughs) happy to see works endure and not only last one generation. So there's a a lot more we could dive into just that question. But thank you for that very thoughtful um, response. And I think that's an interesting piece of advice to give. And I think that'll help people no matter what book of the prophets they're approaching. Absolutely, and I and I think too, it's it's quite interesting to think that um, that that many of our students, when they come into this, we we all have sort of these presuppositions, these ideas about how the text came about to begin with, uh, and so. Uh, I think it's important to just straight out say, as you have, the, 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 to put it in a positive light. Redaction criticism is such a such a nice way to say that. 